Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. An 11-year-old boy suffering from excessive gas discovers a way to turn his problem into a precious talent. Today we will recap the story of the 2002 movie, Thunderpants. On the day Patrick Smash was born, his mother was having trouble giving birth due to an air bubble that the boy had created inside her belly. That gas ended up causing an explosion and Patrick was thrown out. Luckily, the doctor was able to catch him and thus prevented the newborn from falling. At the moment when the whole family gathers to register that important date, the problems start. Unlike any other baby, that boy let out extremely noisy and smelly gases. As Patrick grew older, this problem only increased. One day, when he was still a baby, his father tried to use a garbage bag to contain those death gases, but within minutes the bag filled up and burst after coming in contact with the tip of a pair of scissors. The explosion was so great that his mother woke up frightened. However, it was Mr. Smash who really got hurt in this story. Since the problem was not solved with the garbage bag, the man decided to connect a tube to the boy's pants. The other end was attached to the window, so that every time Patrick let out a gas, the stench would be sent out. However, the idea proved to be flawed when the boy managed to get out of his playpen and decided to walk around the room. The tunnel broke loose from the window and got in Mr. Smash's face, which was contaminated by that stench. This time, the man needed to be hospitalized and was happy to take a vacation at the hospital. When he returned home, he was already at his limit and decided to leave his family. After that, Patrick's sister Denise stopped talking to him. Even his mother started to ignore him. On his first day of school, the boy drove everyone away with his incessant farting, except Alan. The red-haired boy had no sense of smell, so he was the only one who agreed to be friends with Patrick. From that day on, they became inseparable. Because of his problem, Patrick suffered a lot at school and faced a daily fight against Damon. The bully, despite being much older, every day looked for trouble with the boy and even beat him. He steals Patrick's lunchbox and, seeing that there is only grain inside, decides to throw all the food away. That was a special snack to keep Patrick's farts from getting too stinky. When he tries to intervene in his friend's defense, Alan ends up getting beaten up too. Alan considers himself a great genius and his dream is to become a brilliant inventor. His first great invention must be a machine that can fly without using human resources as fuel. The boy tells Patrick, his best friend, that he intends to participate in an upcoming aviation contest and says that after coming out as the winner, he will become even stronger. That afternoon, Mr. John Osgood, the second greatest tenor in the world, comes to the school to give a performance. At the end of the song, the man invites all the students to pray with him, asking that when those children grow up, they may have a gift similar to his. However, during the prayer, Patrick can't help himself and lets a fart escape. The noise is terrible and the whole hall is infested with that disturbing smell. His teacher, Miss Rapier, accuses the boy of having ruined Mr. John's visit and orders him to leave. When he gets home, he has to eat his mother's homemade cookies, which have no flavor, while watching his older sister eating a delicious plate of beans. Patrick's greatest dream is to become an astronaut and he even writes a letter to the American Space Center. However, he tears up the paper upon hearing the statement of the Commander-in-Chief of Operations at the American Space Center, in which the man states that in order to become an astronaut, one must have determination, absolute control of oneself, and a unique gift. To help him overcome his problem, Patrick decides to turn to his only friend, Alan. Since there is still one week left before the flying contest, the boy decides to build a machine to help him. Alan asks Patrick to wait outside the garage while he manufactures his newest invention. The next morning, the machine was finally ready and Alan introduces the Thunderpants. With that invention, all the gases released by Patrick will be trapped in his shorts. By pushing the button, the fart is sent into the lunchbox through a hose, and then can be safely disposed of in the detox chamber. That afternoon, Mr. John Osgood reports to school again, and during the prayer, Patrick uses his Thunderpants to muffle the sound of his fart and contain the odor. At lunchtime, Damon shows up again to torment the boy, but this time when he picks up his lunchbox, he gets an even bigger surprise. Upon opening Patrick's lunchbox, the bully is bombarded with all the gases that had been collected that day. As revenge, he ties the boy to one of the toys in the yard and enlists the help of other students to rip his thunderpants off. While being attacked, Patrick lets out one of his stinky farts and is labeled a freak by his schoolmates. In the following days, the boy did not show up at school, so Alan goes to his house to see him. The little genius takes a new thunderpants for his friend, who is no longer interested in the gadget. Tired of having to live with her son's problem, Mrs. Smash decides to take him to yet another doctor, hoping to find out what the boy's problem is. After some tests, she discovers that the boy has two stomachs. Upon seeing this, the doctor states that he has never seen anything like it and says that Patrick is an individual with a unique gift. These words encourage the boy. 
Now that he knows he has a gift, he is one step closer to realizing his dream of becoming an astronaut. Patrick then runs to tell his friend the news, but on the way he hears Mr. Osgood rehearsing for his world tour and decides to go there to take a look. Outside the window, while listening to the song, the boy lets out such a high-pitched bang that John and his team think he was singing. The tenor tries to talk to him, in order to invite him to join the team, but since he knows that his farts always get him into trouble, Patrick runs away. When he arrives at Alan's house, the boy shows him his double stomach and this causes the genius to come up with a new idea to incorporate into his invention. On the day of the competition, they are confident that they will receive the prize money that will be given to whoever is able to fly 30 meters without the aid of motors, batteries, or fossil fuels. The winner will receive his prize at the hands of Mr. John Osgood, who is cheered by the audience as soon as he arrives on the scene. As he receives the applause, he spots Patrick and recognizes the boy. That morning, the boy ingests a list of the most varied kinds of food, all so that he will have enough gas to help Alan win the contest. The presenter starts the event and the first competitors present their machine. All the spectators are frustrated to realize that the man could not even move with that thing. The contest goes on and on, and increasingly the unsuccessful contestants must leave the performance bedridden. None of them succeeded in their mission to build a sustainable aircraft and were there only to embarrass themselves in front of the public. Alan and Patrick are the last to perform, and as they enter the stage, they are immediately teased by the audience for being too young. The show begins and Patrick uses his powerful fart to start the show. Slowly, the duo floats to the finish line, but along the way, a hose comes loose spreading the stench into the atmosphere. Alan manages to fix the machine and, with the indispensable help of his friend, he manages to be the winner of that contest. Along with the stench, the moment the hose comes off, John again hears the beautiful notes that complement his voice. In that instant, he discovers that Patrick is, in fact, responsible for that beautiful song, but the sound does not come from his mouth, as usual, but from his farts. After that day, Alan promised to help his friend become an astronaut, but first, Patrick had some unfinished business to attend to. He goes to the school after Damon and starts terrorizing the delinquent with his gases, the boy tries to run away, but Patrick pursues him. They go into the forest, where Damon ends up being surrounded. When he has nowhere else to run, Patrick approaches him and, after taking aim at the boy's face, releases a fart that can infest the entire place. He then walks to Alan's house, when he sees the boy getting into a car and driving away without saying goodbye. Patrick goes to see his friend's father and the man hands him a letter. In writing, Alan was saying that he was moving to another country because there was a government company in need of his genius. Alan wishes Patrick good luck in achieving his dream and states that he has no projected date of return. Disappointed, the boy leaves and, while watching the news, discovers that a ship has been sent into space and got stuck there. General Shepard of the U.S. Space Center says that his team is doing everything possible to make a rescue mission possible, but their ideas are running out. Just then, someone rings the doorbell, and when Patrick answers the door, he runs into Mr. John Osgood, who is there to extend an invitation to him. The tenor invites the boy to join him on a world tour. When he learns that he will be able to visit other countries, Patrick decides to accept the offer, because then, perhaps, he will be able to meet Alan again on the way. With the boy's help, Osgood hits impressive notes on stage and becomes the world's number one tenor, taking over the position that previously belonged to Placido. During his travels, the boy took the opportunity to try to discover the whereabouts of his friend, but none of the people who crossed his path had seen the young redhead. They take a break in Rome for one more show, and while Patrick rehearses, John counts his pile of money. The boy is eager to eat the dessert, but the tenor says he won't be able to taste that pudding until he finishes practicing. The man then leaves for dinner, but before he goes, he orders the boy to continue his rehearsals. Just then, Placido appears at the hotel and sees Osgood coming down the stairs, while listening to the song coming from the opposite direction. When he enters the room, he doesn't quite understand what is going on, but Patrick innocently tells him that he has been accompanying John to all of his performances and uses his farts to help him achieve the highest notes. Upon hearing this, Placido takes a flask from his jacket and pours the liquid under the pudding. That night, during the show, Patrick completes the end of the song, as usual. However, the note is so high that it ends up breaking all the glass fixtures in the venue, as well as wobbling the screws that suspend the stage lights. Ultimately, Patrick has a stomach problem in the middle of the performance and Osgood is unmasked. At that moment, Placido gets up, walks on stage, and claims that John is a fraud. He tells him that the boy is the one who plays the notes through his buttocks. During his speech, a spotlight falls on his head, causing the tenor's death. The show is immediately shut down and all the performers try to rescue him, but it is too late. 
The next morning, Placido's tragic death became headline news in all the newspapers and Patrick was being arrested for unintentionally causing it. Although he had no intention of eliminating that man, Patrick, through his gases, loosened the bolts that allowed the object to come loose and crush the skull of the competing tenor. While he is being taken to jail, several reporters approach him, and Patrick takes the opportunity to apologize publicly. He says that he only agreed to go on the tour in order to find his friend. What he didn't know, is that Alan was watching his entire outburst on TV and asks one of his employees to come and get him. During the hearing, the jury refuses to hear all the testimony in favor of the boy, such as that of a metalworker who claims that the pin was loose due to a manufacturing defect and could come loose at any time. Even John Osgood was testifying against him and the judge convicts Patrick by mercilessly taking lead. However, before the shooting begins, a car with agents of the United States Special Forces appears on the scene and Johnson delivers a letter from the minister, authorizing the prisoner's transfer to the custody of the American government. After freeing Patrick, the man asks the boy to accompany him to a place where they are in dire need of his gift. They get into the car and the whole team puts on a mask so as not to smell the boy's gases. When they arrive at the airport, the group gets on a plane and Patrick already has a separate room especially for him. In the closet are the items he likes to wear most, and next to his bed is a picture of himself and Alan together. When they land, hours later, the two friends meet again and run to hug each other. Alan explains that he was recruited by the Space Center after winning the aviation contest. They were in need of Alan's genius to help them rescue the astronauts who were trapped in space. The boy wanted to tell Patrick about this before he left his town, but could not say anything because the mission was still a secret. Now they need Patrick's help to save the astronauts. After meeting General Shepard, the boy discovers that in 24 hours his dream of traveling into space will come true. Alan introduces his team to his friend and tells him that the American Space Center recruits young geniuses from all over the planet to lead the research. Based on the anatomy of Patrick's two stomachs, those young men developed a revolutionary new jet engine that was to be used in the rescue rocket. However, the prototype could not withstand the tests and was destroyed, so now Patrick must use its gases to act as fuel for the spacecraft. Alan says he has found a way to enhance his friend's farts and increase their effect exponentially. In this way, Patrick will be able to launch the rescue ship and become America's newest hero. As soon as he enters the base, the boy goes through an intense 12 years of training in just two and a half hours. 24 hours have passed and the big moment has arrived. After putting on his spacesuit, a team helps Patrick attach the tube to his buttocks. They do some tests, and after the boy manages to release fire with a single gas, Alan can confirm that his invention is working perfectly. The launch will take place in less than 30 minutes and the boy walks towards the ship, accompanied by some experts. Before taking off, he even has the privilege of meeting the President of the United States and receives his most sincere thanks. When they arrive at the spaceship, Patrick soon settles into his cabin. However, the General receives some bad news. One of the technicians says that when he went to check the launch sequence, he found a problem, which can cause the rocket to explode 20 seconds after takeoff. The chances of this happening are 79% and Shepard informs Alan of the situation. He asks the boy to tell his friend about this possibility and asks if he wishes to abort the mission. Alan states that even if the boy gives up the trip, he will still be considered a great hero. The choice is up to Patrick alone. But instead of giving up, the boy asks to leave a message to the world before he leaves. He tells them that he is fulfilling a great dream at that moment and will do his best to succeed in his mission. Patrick adds that he has always tried to please his family, but has never been able to meet their expectations. Moreover, he was only a burden to his schoolmates, who despised him so much. Although he took care to live up to his teacher's expectations, he let them down. John Osgood is one of the millions of viewers who is listening to this speech, but he does it while picking food out of the garbage, because when he was unmasked, he stopped being hired for shows. Finally, Patrick thanks Alan for his friendship and states that with his gift and his friend's brilliant mind, nothing can go wrong. Everyone is thrilled to hear the boy's speech, especially the Space Center employees, but now it is time for takeoff. After the countdown, Patrick releases his most powerful fart, and seconds later the spaceship takes off. Soon after takeoff, the recording is interrupted and they lose contact with the boy. Everyone is apprehensive, believing that the ship may have exploded, but through the microphones installed in the rocket, they hear the notes resulting from Patrick's gases and have confirmation that the young man is alive. While looking at the beautiful view from space, Patrick is proud of his talent, and what had always been a reason for disappointment in his life has now become a reason for great joy. Days later, the world breathed a sigh of relief when the astronauts arrived. They spent 26 days of much anguish in space, as the hope of being rescued dwindled. However, they were saved by the young hero, Patrick Smash, and were greeted with a celebratory parade.
So, what did you think of this movie? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like the video, like it and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.